everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is going to feature a couple of topics that we've already been over, but actually bringing them together to um, actually create a more advanced calculator than we've previously looked at. So what we're going to do is obviously combine the input boxes and the if function that we recently learned together, uh, like I say, to make a more advanced calculator that we've previously previously built in past videos. So we'll jump straight into it. So the first thing we need to do, obviously we've got our module here and we've inserted that via this uh, drop down box at the top here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we'll do our subroutine and we're gonna call this one simple calculator. Calculator. Calculator, if I can spell calculator, not that it matters too much. Um, but here we go, and we can jump straight into um, coding this. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to have two numbers and just to explain how our calculator will work, we'll ask the user to input two numbers and we'll also be asking the user to provide a symbol, so a, a plus, a minus, a division or multiplication and then obviously our calculator will then perform the desired calculation based on the symbol that they've provided, obviously using the two numbers they've entered as well. So we're going to first define our variables. So the first ones are going to be our numbers, so we'll do dim number one as integer and we'll also do number two as integer as well. The second part is our symbol uh, so this is going to be stored as a string so for this we'll do dim not sim dim and we'll call it sim one as string and that is our all of our variables that we require that have been defined. Uh, this next part you can do in any order you wish. You could have uh, you can have the user first input the two numbers and followed by the um, the symbol. Uh, but for this, I'm just going to do it in the same sort of format you would use a calculator. So you enter number one, your symbol, followed by then your second number to obviously to perform the calculation. Uh, so we do num one, and this equals input box. So we're actually going to ask, we'll have an input box will pop up onto the screen asking the user to enter this information or this number. And we'll do enter um, first number. So that's obviously the prompt they'll have on their input box. The second one is going to be sim1. And this will also be the same. So equals input box and enter uh, calculation symbol. Obviously trying to keep it nice and descriptive so the user knows what they're being asked to enter. And the last one is then going to be number two. And this will also be input box, enter uh, second number. So obviously as I've entered these, this is the order that the input boxes will be popping up. So like I said, if you want to have your first, the first two pop-ups to be your numbers, obviously you just order this number one, number two, with symbol one at the end. Um, but obviously I've just done this, as I mentioned, just to keep the same usual format you'd see from a calculator. So once both, all three of those input boxes have popped up and the user has entered their information, we now need to obviously take that information and perform our calculation. So the first thing we're going to be, well, we're going to be obviously using our if statement. And so we now need to go through all the different iterations of the symbols that they could be entering and the different calculations performed based on that symbol. So the first one is going to be if and sim one equals and in quotations plus. So we know that uh, if they enter the plus symbol, then they want to do an addition. So we then go then go indent into the line as well. So if they've entered the plus, then what we need to do is we'll do a message box just to keep this nice and simple. So we're not going to be storing the value anywhere. We're literally going to just display the result of our calculation in a message box, and that's it. That'll be the end of the routine. So if they've entered the plus symbol, then our message box needs to be number one plus number two. And when I say what our message box needs to be, it just means the that's the value or the result of number one plus number two is the result our message box will be showing. If they haven't entered the plus symbol, then we'll do else if uh, sim1 equals a minus symbol. Um, then this time, obviously, the similar format, or very much the same format, is going to be msg box is therefore going to be number one minus number two. So obviously, that's the result it will present. So if it's not a plus or it's not a minus, then it could be else if uh, sim1 is equal to a division, 
there. So I'm just doing obviously a slash there. Then message box is going to be number one divided by number two. And the last one of our symbols, we'll then do else if sim one is equal to a multiplication symbol. And obviously not to get mistaken with the X, we need to be using the asterisk. So you can either do shift eight, or if you've got the additional part on your keyboard to the right, you will have that multiplication symbol there as well. And then do then message box. The result should be, or the value presented in that message box should be number one times by number two. So that covers off all of our symbols. So we've got the four symbols, we've got the, the addition, the, divi um, the minus, the division, and the multiplication. So if they haven't entered one of those values, so the, the value stored in sim one is not one of those symbols, we're then gonna just use an else statement and say message box, enter a valid symbol. And then once we've done that, we can then do end if, and that is it. So just to talk through obviously what we have here now. So first we've defined obviously all of the variables that we're going to be using. Once we've done that, we're then gonna be able to store the value for each one of those variables. And each one of those, or every one of those is gonna be stored via the use of an input box. So obviously number one, the first thing will happen, there'll be an input box asking them to enter their first number and that will get stored as number one. The second input box will ask them to enter the calculation symbol and that will be stored as sim one. And the last one, we've got number two, that'll be an input box asking them to store or enter a second number to be stored in sum or number two. Obviously once we've done that, we're then using the if function to perform a number of if statements to identify what, what symbol they have entered. Obviously, depending on the symbol entered, we'll then perform the appropriate calculation. So the addition, the minus, the division, and the multiplication. If, however, they haven't entered a symbol or they've given a, a non-valid symbol, such as a letter or well, any other symbol available on the keyboard, then we'll say, okay, well, we need to present a message box that says enter a valid symbol. So no calculation will be performed. They will just receive a message box saying enter a valid symbol. So what we'll do, we'll run through this for like maybe five um, examples just to test each one of those scenarios. As always, to run this, we can either do this using F5 or our play button here. I will just be doing F5 uh, as it's just a lot quicker and easier to do. So if I hit F5, we can see we've got our first input box, so enter your first number. I'm going to enter number five. We'll click OK. The next thing we're we'll asked is to enter calculation symbol. So let's do a plus symbol. OK. And then we're asked to enter our second number, go number five. So we're going to be doing this very first um, function or uh, scenario at the top here. OK. So yeah, we can see we've got the result of 10. So five plus five is obviously equal to 10. If we then to run that, obviously when you then do that last message box, what gives you the result, as soon as you click OK, obviously it's then going to, the, uh, the subroutine is then finished and you're then out of the routine. So that's then um, all done. Let's run this again. So let's do now maybe 10. And I'm just going to hit the enter button because you can see obviously the OK is already selected. Rather than use the mouse, you can just use the enter button. So my calculation symbol, I'll do a minus. And then this time let's do the number three. So we can see it's correctly performed our uh, subtraction. We'll go into it again. And this time we'll do 10 and we'll say divided by two. And that gives us the value of five, brilliant. Then we'll go one more. We've got the first number is five. This time we'll do a multiplication. So we've got that multiplication symbol, enter and five. Yeah, correctly gives us the value of 25. And then the last scenario is if we now go into this and we go, let's say number five, but this time we enter an incorrect symbol. So let's say a question mark, or it could be anything, just basically anything other than a symbol is gonna cause this scenario. Do enter, and then we'll go into five again. You can say we've now got the message box there saying enter a valid symbol. So obviously the calculation hasn't been able to do, well, basically hasn't been able to calculate because the symbol was invalid. So if we do okay, you can say again, we've now come out of the routine. 
So this is how we can create a more advanced calculation than what we've previously looked at in this series. Obviously, there's some additional logic you could apply here if you so wish, such as if uh, a number um, or one of those number input boxes, if someone doesn't input a number, they put something else, then obviously you could put some validation that says um, enter a valid number. Uh, and obviously that then can exit the subroutine at the point of entering. Uh, and many other options are available to you and you can customize this as you so require. So that concludes this video, creating that more uh, advanced calculation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give the video a like. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated by myself. If it's the first time, again, coming across the channel uh, or you have watched our videos before, please do hit that subscribe button and also make sure you hit that notification button so you're notified of all of our new videos as they come out. As always, if you have any questions, please just drop me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, so again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.